For a long time I've been hearing about secret societies. Some people claim they are harmful organizations and others say they are useful to society. I think their story is important and could be affecting our lives. There have always been secret societies to retain knowledge. In the Arab world was completely fascinated by the idea of secret societies, Western secret societies. There are all sorts of secret societies there are political ones, there are criminal ones, and indeed there are. A factor there is just that we each sometimes interpret them differently. One of the towers. Secret societies have fiercely compartmentalized. But there's a level above that that's where the real game is going on. Washington DC was indeed laid out according to Masonic symbolism. Do secret societies exist? And are they trying to rule the world from the shadow? I've always thought of myself as a free thinker. I am always hungry for knowledge. When I was at school, my favorite subjects were mathematics, physics and literature. I love numbers and shapes. And at the same time, I enjoy a good story. And I love mystery. Mysteries generally propel my curiosity and need to know my curiosity made me think of what is called secret societies. Like the Illuminati, the Freemasons, and many other secret societies they say have existed since a long time ago. And there are alleged records of some of them, and claims that their members reached as far as to rule nations, and stories about strange rituals exercised in their meetings. What are these secret societies? Do they really exist? And what is their purpose? When I started the journey to search for answers, I got lost, lost between many secret societies. Each one has its own rules and objectives, the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Rosicrucians, Skull and Bones and many others we hear of and maybe others we don't. So I decided I should start by talking to someone who did a lot of research on this topic. I reached David Dicka, maybe he can show me the way. Hi, David, you have investigated secret societies for a long time. Can you please tell me more about the origins of secret societies? There have always been secret societies well, as far back as we can ascertain, because there's always been groups of people that wanted to retain secrets, secrets, to hoard knowledge. If I have a certain highly important level of knowledge, and you don't, I am in a position of power over you. So the objective of secret societies is actually to keep essential knowledge hidden from the public. We live in a world that actually is made up of two worlds. One is the world that the population live in, and that is limited in terms of the knowledge that it has. This knowledge is kept from the population by not allowing it into the public arena. And this other world is made up of a global network of secret societies in which this knowledge is passed on through the generations of carefully chosen initiates at the core of the court overwhelmingly coming from a network of interbreeding families. So being a member of a secret society, for instance, like the Freemasons, you would have access to knowledge that nobody else has. These secret. Societies have fiercely compartmentalized. You look at just the Freemasons as an example, the bottom three levels of degree the so-called blue degrees, and there's 33 levels, and you only progress to the next level, which is what the next level of knowledge if that level decides you are worthy of it, or you're the kind of person that should have it. You have, say the Freemasons, you have the Jesuit order. You have the Knights Templar, and they appear of course compartmentalized in their individual pyramids, but there's a level above that, at that level, which doesn't officially exist. That's where the real game is going on. What is written about the Templars is that they were formed in the Middle Ages. They were warriors. They say they invented banking as we know it, and they amassed incredible fortunes and they offered loans to kings and nations as a way to control them. Then it is said they became builders and pirates, and grew more popular and powerful, until they were outlawed by the King of France, and their leaders were burned at the stake. But many say they continued in secret, and became more occult. It seems there are many secret societies who people believe are ruling the world are producing its leaders. Like the fraternity called Ordinary Templi or New Templars, that is said to be behind the rise of Hitler. The fraternity was founded by your clans from the urban fellas, a racial theorist, anglophone list, a no coast. Lynn Pignut is a writer and researcher whose work on secret societies is very useful. I think she could help answer a few questions. Hi, Lynn, you did an extensive research on the Templars? Yeah. We did the research. Yes. So what can you tell me about secret societies and their relation to power? There are all sorts of secret societies, there are political ones, there are criminal ones. And indeed, there are ones I always say that the paranormal is thing. It's things that happen. And the occult is things you choose to do. You know, so join a society, and ritual magic, for example, which is all about focusing your will through rituals, and they hope to change the actual world through their will whether or not they manage it, or not another matter. 
Do you think there is a link between secret societies and powerful political organizations, such as the Nazis? The Nazis have their roots in a sort of semi-mystical belief system called Ariel Sufi, which actually came from the 19th century, but built up in importance after the First World War when Germany was beaten, and Germany felt it needed to build up its national pride. So they became very obsessed with Ariel study, which was basically the idea that the Aryan race was in a very ancient race that had ancient wisdom and had mystical roots. And were going to rule the world. So the idea of a unified identity and purpose could very well be one of the main reasons or motivations behind such groups. I think it's part of human DNA in a way is, is that you, you know, isn't I know, something that they don't know. And then you say it, you say to somebody, do you want to know my secret? Yeah. And it's, it's actually it's poem is quite interesting that you have the United States of all places, you know, being actually founded, but unapologetic Freemasons. I mean, you know, they, they were, you know, there was nothing sinister about them. Because at that time, certainly, the pre-Masonic ideal was about enlightenment. So you have, you know, George Washington, you know, Benjamin Franklin, a huge number of, of the founding fathers were in fact, Freemasons. May believe there is magic and symbols now. Washington DC was indeed laid out according to Masonic symbolism, to stamp the new center, the new capital, with the Masonic presence, if you like and perhaps some of them did believe it did protect it in some way. Everything is attached by a very thin thread. The facts are there. It's just that we each sometimes always interpret them differently. What are we supposed to do? We can only speculate when there is a gap in the information. True. But there is a limit, beyond which it's no longer speculation that becomes just fertile imagination. According to certain research, some secret societies also existed in the Arab world, some from a long time ago like the assassins and the backlash, and it seems that they may have been an inspiration to some Western secret societies. And there are claims that some Arab Muslim great thinkers and figures were in one way or another linked to a secret society. We may hear negatively of the Freemasons and consider it an accusation, but we all admire some of their figures for their contribution to humanity. This can be surprising, especially when these figures are Arabs. This is something worth exploring. I will talk to healthcare Mazi. An MIT researcher and Harvard PhD candidate, he can tell us about secret societies in the Arab world. It's rare to be very good to start by saying that seeing Freemasonry and secret societies as a particularly evil organization, in the Arab world, especially, is mostly a product of the second half of the 20th century. But if we look at the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, we would see that the elites in the Arab world was completely fascinated actually, by the idea of, of secret societies. Western secret societies, and Western Freemasonic lodges. The first reason was that the Freemasonry is an elitist group that is interested in hiring and adopting as brothers, those who are proved that they are influential in their societies. The second reason they are different from the colonial materialist racist program, and perhaps most importantly, that they claim they had a spiritual aspect to them. Can you please talk to me a little bit about the decline of secret societies, especially in the Arab world, what happened to them? They were so popular and all of a sudden everybody wants to stay away from them. The problem with Freemasonry basically, when it when it started, one of them that included the elite, the elite, starting having a problem with Freemasonry happened when the colonialism and a lot of the local elite wanted to be to be as far as possible from any Western lineage. The second reason it's an important one is actually the creation of the State of Israel, that Zionism in that sense, was always affiliated to some sort of big Masonic world conspiracy, and linking Zionism and Freemasonry made it very difficult for a lot of Arab intellectuals, to want to be fitted to Freemasonry ought to acknowledge the fact that they were or they want to. The third one, perhaps, is that it is true that especially and this is relatively new in the last 30 years, mostly, since the link between Freemasonry and archaeologists, societies and Zionism to a certain extent and imperial powers. That new network of some sort of Western all-powerful secret organizations made it almost impossible today not very difficult to claim any affiliation to Freemasonry without fearing the repercussions of it because of that new idea that was adopted by the public that Freemasonry is an evil organization.